Let's pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful gathered here out of love for you. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be renewed. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Jan Funk, and I am your visitation pastor here at First Wayne Street. And you can see from the title that I have three scriptures I want to talk about this morning and share with you. And the first one is from Romans 8:28. Many of you probably already know it. It goes something like this: All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now these verses are in a group of verses in Romans where Paul is really trying to speak to human suffering but also to the great hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And other things that he says in these bank of verses are things like we are more than conquerors and that the spirit groans with us, the spirit prays with us. So in all of these verses, Paul is trying to get across what I think are some pretty big concepts about the spirit helping us when we struggle, but also that we are conquerors. Do you feel like a conqueror this morning? No, you're gonna have to be stronger than that to be a conqueror. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to stand up. <laughs> so the first time that I remember being aware of this verse, I had opened up a Bible that my grandfather had given to Jeff and I as a wedding present, which was quite a while ago. And on this image, you can see this is what he wrote to Jeffrey and Janet Funk from Grandma and Grandpa, Romans 8:28. What you can't see is on the other side, he had said, read this Bible often. It will bring a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. This was long before Amy Grant had made that song popular, and long before I realized that those words were actually part of a song, psalm, that, God, that God's word is a lamp unto our feet. But when I saw that Romans 8:28 in kind of his old handwriting, I thought, okay, I'll go look, I'll go see. And of course it said, all things work together for good. All things work together for good for those that love the Lord. And I thought, well, Grandpa, you of all people should know that that can't be true. I mean, think of all the things that happen in our world. Think of all the tragedy. Think of all the struggles. In fact, Grandpa, you of all people should know that that can't be true because of, if I could have my next image, little Margaret Joanne. Little Margaret Joanne would actually be 93 this fall. She would have been my aunt. And in this picture, she's three years old. My father would have been a baby. He was about three months old. And this was the last picture taken of her, and her family described her as being a little sprite. She liked to skip and gallop and giggle and sing, and she was just a huge delight to the family, just a complete delight. But one day she went and climbed up on a slide, and she fell down and hit her head. And at that point, the family laid her out in the parlor, and they prayed over her, and the neighbors prayed over her, and the church, the first Mennonite church in Bern prayed over her. Everybody prayed over little Margaret Joanne. And we all know what that prayer was, don't we? Well, after three days, little Margaret Joanne passed away. That night, the neighbor lady stayed up all night sewing a brand new dress so that Margaret Joanne wouldn't have to be buried in an old dress. The community came together, of course, and surrounded my grandfather and grandmother with lots of love. And so I grew up with this story. And you know, it's kind of interesting. I'm the oldest of four kids, so when each one of my siblings was three years old, I felt nervous. Like, you know, they could fall off of a slide. And then when I had my own two children and they turned three, I was nervous again. You know, you could fall off of a slide. And now I have grandchildren, and nieces and nephews, and I'm not kidding, every time somebody passes through that age three, I feel kind of nervous. But she seems to be the only one so far, and it's been 90 years. 
But I also grew up then with this all things work together for good, and I think my grandfather truly believed that. And that doesn't mean that he didn't miss this little child that was such a delight. And it doesn't mean that he didn't have doubts. I think Grandpa Leo did have doubts. But he hung on to that verse and hung on to it. And then one day when my little daughter was about three and my son would have been eight, so he went off to school, I decided to pack her up and take her to Swiss Village to go see him. He would have been in his 90s. And I thought, you know what, we're just going to go see Grandpa. And so when we walked into the room, he kind of took this deep breath and he said, she looks just like Margaret Joanne. And so here we are, this would be 1985. I'm holding Rainbow Bright, which <laughs> she went everywhere with us in those years. And my, my little daughter is obviously very happy, but I think the smile that means the most to me is on Grandpa's face. Because I think in that moment, holding his three-year-old great granddaughter, all things work together for good, came true. I believe when you look at this image, you are seeing the image of that verse being true for this man. He waited a long time, but it all came together for him. So I think these moments that I tend to gather as I visit people are part of the reason why I love to visit our elderly and I love to visit our shut-ins. I hear these stories of faith. I hear stories of hardship and struggles. You know, you don't get into your 80s and 90s and not have times of struggles. And I can think of a lot of them that I would love to share with you, but the one that I want to share with you this morning is one that I asked this woman if I could use. And you know, a lot of you tell me stories, and I just want you to know I would never share a story unless I asked you first and you said that it would be okay. So this woman is in her 90s, and I visit pretty regularly, and she's told me about her adult children, and one day she told me about her son, her son that went off to the Vietnam War, and then when he came back, he really struggled with alcoholism, mightily struggled with alcoholism. And then in the course of trying to recover, he went to AA, but then he also discovered that he was gay in the midst of a society that wasn't very understanding about that. And then after that, he found out that he had cancer, and he passed away. So as she's telling me this story, I'm thinking, okay, God, where is the all things work together for good? I'm looking for it, but that sounds like a very hard life. That sounds very difficult. And I would visit again and again, and we would talk about a lot of different things. But on one of my more recent visits, she started talking about this son again, and then she said, you know what gives me hope? I thought, tell me. I'm listening. I want to hear. She said, what gives me hope is when I went to his funeral, people came up to me and said, your son saved my life. He was my sponsor at AA. Your son saved my life. I discovered I was gay and I wanted to kill myself and he talked me out of it. Your son saved my life by being at AA meetings and sharing his story. Your son saved my life over and over and over again. And I just blurted out, no greater love is this than you lay down your life for your friends. And that's our next scripture, which is the John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Now she looked at me and I looked at her and I will tell you those words popping out of my mouth kind of surprised me. I hadn't really thought about them. But then I said to her, you know, I have been to AA meetings. I went with my brother who has passed away. Sometimes the people that are there are still drinking. Sometimes they're still pretty selfish. Sometimes they're fairly narcissistic and your son chose to go. And I bet he had moments when he didn't feel like it. And that's the part where I think he laid down his life. He didn't feel like going, but he went anyway. Maybe he didn't feel like helping the person that was struggling with their alcoholism, but he went anyway. It's a form of no greater love has no one than this than to lay down your own schedule, to lay down your own wishes, to lay down your own needs for your friends. Now, when Jesus talks about these verses in John, he's also talking about the vine He's talking about how we're all interconnected. He's talking about how important it is to keep God's commandments. 
and he's also calling us friend. You all are my friends here this morning. You are friends with each other. We are here to be friends with Jesus. Next slide. So we've already talked about how all things can work together for good, and we've already talked about a greater love, and you all kind of understand this, but this verse, I think, is the one that um, I think of when I think of struggles. And there's, you know, there's a lot of verses about struggling. There's the verses in Job, there's um, verses in Psalms, there's laments. But in this verse, Jesus says to Peter, and he calls him Simon. And the reason he calls him Simon, one commentator said, is because Peter is going to regress. Peter's had this wonderful life of faith, and he's moving and walking with our Lord and Savior but he's about to deny Christ three times when the rooster crows, and Jesus is going to tell him that. So here he uses his old name, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Have you ever thought about being sifted like wheat? What if we put Jan Jan The Lord, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. Do you think I've ever had moments in my life where I felt sifted like wheat? I'm guessing some of you feel sifted by wheat by your grief. It's one of the reasons that you're here this morning. Put your own name in there. Satan has asked for you. It's almost like when Satan asked for Job. Jesus is very familiar with this idea that Satan will ask. What if we say, Grandpa, Grandpa, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat? And yet they sat around for three days and prayed. What if we say, woman, woman, Satan is asked to sift you like wheat, and her son has alcoholism and cancer. The important part is Jesus has prayed for us. Jesus has prayed for you. Jesus is praying for you in these very moments. The Holy Spirit prays for you. Scriptures tell us the Holy Spirit groans with us. And because you have been prayed for, you go out and strengthen your brethren. I see that. I see Dan here with water, and he's going out strengthening his brethren. I hope every one of you have prayed for that water ministry. I see people going out to tutor students. I hope every one of you have prayed for our tutors as they go out and help those students. Every one of you, I hope you have prayed. So even though your name is in that verse, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, know that you are prayed for. Your pastors pray for you, and you pray for us. And that is so very, very important. And then at the end of the verse, it says that Peter will turn around and strengthen others. So how do we strengthen others in our congregation? How do we do that? Well, one of the ways that we do that is we do things with our youth. And what you see up here is a VBS picture And these kids came every evening this summer, and I think they had a wonderful time here at VBS. And in the midst of that, I think, is my little great nephew. I think he's the one clear over here on the end with the towel on his his lap. And he really enjoyed VBS. So that's one of the ways that we strengthen others. And in fact, then he came again a couple of weeks ago, if I could have that next slide. And he did some uh, work in class. He found out that God told Moses that God's full power was too big to capture in a name. That's the fourth scripture this morning. You're getting a bonus. So how we encourage each other is important. So little Charlie came for VBS. He came for Sunday school. And I hope that someday, as an adult, he will read about Romans 8.28. I hope all of you will read about Romans 8.28 and reflect on how God does great things in our midst. And if you're blessed, you will keep reading. You will keep reading past Romans 8.28 and go on to Romans 8.38 and 39, where Paul tells us, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, 
nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. That's your message of hope this morning. Nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God that you have in Christ Jesus. So those verses tell us that we cannot be separated. And as we move into communion, we find that through that process, we can actually be drawn closer to God. So I hope you'll hang on to those moments this week. You cannot be separated from God because of love. And in fact, this morning in communion, you are drawn closer to the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.